Greetings, humans on the internet. This is your friendly neighborhood. Marijuana guy. And before I get into the actual topic of the video, I just want to quickly give my thought about the changes that have happened to UFC 251. As all of you know by now, Gilbert Burns tested positive for Corona and was forced to pull out of the fight against Usman. Luckily, Cuban Jesus stepped in on less than a week's notice to save the main event, which I'm very grateful for. So in this matchup, Masvidal will have a major striking advantage over Usman and presents far more danger on the feet to the champ than Gilbert does. However, Usman will still have a great advantage in the wrestling and even possibly on the ground. On the ground, I can see Masvidal showing his craftiness and being able to occasionally outscramble Usman. But all in all, I think Usman will have an overall advantage in the grappling department. More importantly though, Masvidal doesn't present the same danger to deter Usman from going for a takedown as Burns does. Which means that Usman will likely just go for the path of least resistance and stick to what he's best at. The threat of the takedown might also present problems for Masvidal on the feet, as he might be more hesitant to commit to his attacks. The only real danger that Masvidal brings to the table here is his unpredictability and power. If he isn't able to put Usman out within the first few rounds, I think Usman will control them for the entirety of the fight and ride it to a decision, which I think is the most likely outcome. It really sucks because with a full training camp, I genuinely think Masvidal could beat Usman or at least have a far more competitive fight. But as it stands now, with less than a week's time to prepare, having to fly across the globe to a foreign country, not being able to get cornered by your own head coach, I just don't think Masvidal is really prepared at the moment to take on the champion. And unless he gets the knockout early, I see him getting dragged to deep waters and ultimately outgrappled by Usman. Also, I need to make a quick correction to my prediction regarding Josie Aldo versus Peter Yan. I stated in the previous video that it's a three-round fight, but it's in fact a five-round title fight for the vacant Bantamweight title. I still believe that Aldo will win, but I just thought to correct my mistake on that one. On to the actual topic of the video. This is the first part in a series where I'm going to be analyzing up-and-comers in the UFC going over their strengths and weaknesses, and maybe even seeing how they match up with the rest of their division. For the record, I won't be including fighters like Macy Barber, Song Yadong, Sean O'Malley, or Kron Gracie, because in my opinion, these fighters have already received a lot of attention and promotion from the UFC itself. So the fighter that I'll be analyzing today is Mark O. Madsen. One of the more recent additions to the UFC's ever-growing crop of lightweight prospects, Denmark's Mark Madsen is an extremely powerful and athletic fighter. Coming from an extensive background of Greco-Roman wrestling, where he even won a silver medal in the Olympics, Madsen has been able to more or less dominate every single one of his opponents so far. Now due to this specific background of wrestling that Madsen comes from, he favors taking his opponents down from a body lock rather than shooting for the legs, as a traditional folk style or freestyle wrestler might do. He usually initiates the clinch in one of three ways. Either by ducking or weaving in towards the opponent's waist, stepping in with a strike, or just zombieing his way in, Ben Askren style. From here, he takes his opponent down with a variety of techniques, such as trips, suplexes, and mat returns. On the ground is where it gets interesting because his top control is very solid when he has a front headlock or when he's controlling his opponent's back. He's able to ride his opponent and constantly break the posture at will. However, when his opponent's back is flat against the mat is where he usually struggles to maintain position and his opponents are usually able to shrimp and regain their guard. On the feet, he's primarily a boxer and mostly looks for the right overhand or right straight to knock his opponents out, rarely putting together combinations. Although very one-dimensional and basic in his approach, he has some pretty good movement and boxing defense. His biggest problem on the feet though is his leg kick defense. Despite having a relatively squared stance, he never really checks leg kicks, opting instead to move out of the way. Most often than not though, he just gets caught by them. Now Madsen's biggest glaring weakness is his cardio. 
Although he's extremely strong in the first two rounds, his high output and work rate slows him down by the third, and this affects both his defense and control over his opponents. Another big problem in Madsen's game is his way of initiating the clinch. Although he's generally very effective at getting a hold of his opponents, occasionally he gets sloppy and doesn't mask his entries as well as he should. This weakness was really exposed in his fight with Austin Hubbard, where he was caught multiple times with knees whilst trying to engage with Hubbard in a clinch. So to recap, Mark Madsen is a very high level wrestler who specializes in taking people down and controlling them from the clinch. His top control is very solid as well, although he struggles a bit to control his opponents when their back is flat against the mat and they're able to use their legs and hips to defend. On the feet, he has good boxing fundamentals, decent movement and great power in his hands. Unfortunately, the clock is ticking on Madsen's career. He's currently 35 years old and he's only been training in MMA for about 6 years. Furthermore, he's in an extremely talent stacked and slow moving division. Although we likely won't see Madsen competing for the lightweight title in the future, I still see some very entertaining and competitive matchups for him against guys like Kevin Lee, Gregor Gillespie and Ally Quinta, just to name a few. So that was it for the video guys, thank you for watching it, if you want to keep up with this new series of mine then subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time.